Hi everyone, in this video we're going to cover section 1.8, Introduction to Linear Transformations. And, and as I have kind of at the bottom of the slide here, um, this section involves a shift in perspective. Throughout this chapter, we've looked at matrix in equations and vector equations, which are just a difference in notation. You know, AX equals B, A times U equals zero is, is a matrix equation. Okay, but in this section, we, as I say, shift our perspective on what does, or we shift it to, what does the matrix A do to the vector X? Multiplication by A takes the vector X, which exists in three dimensions, and maps it onto a two-dimensional plane. Okay, so what does A do to X? Well, it, it drops it down a dimension. It moves the vector X111 one, one, one to the vector B27, right? Uh, and in the second example, what does the matrix A do to the vector U? Well, it maps the, maps the vector U in three dimensions onto the zero vector in two dimensions. So same equations, just shifting our thinking the way that we look at these problems a little bit in this section. On this slide, we have the, the terms that we will use throughout this section and moving forward in the course, right? In this section, we're dealing with transformations, which you can think of as functions or mappings. You've seen these in the past, a transformation. What does it do? What does the function do to the, you know, the, the values that I plug into it? From Rn to Rn is a rule that assigns every vector x to a vector t of x. We're going from Rn to Rm. All right, the set in Rn is called the domain of T. That should sound like a high school term. And the Rm is called the codomain, right? The, 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 the space that we are mapped into is called the codomain. Um, and you can kind of read through the rest of this. I'm not going to read it all out loud for you. Um, for my vector x, the, the T of x is called the image, and the set of all images is called the range, all right? So to label that on my beautifully drawn picture here, actually, I'll come to the label in a second, right? We're going from Rn to Rm, which is the blue cube. So it looks like this transformation takes us from a plane, maps us inside of a cube. The transformation is T, takes my vector x, maps it onto a new vector T of x, and to add a couple of, our, of our terms from the top on here, our domain, right, is over there. Our codomain is the blue cubish looking figure that I drew. And the range is the green kind of rectangly plane inside of the codomain. The T of X would also be considered the image of vector X. Okay, so there's another picture in the book similar to what I have drawn here. Um, the, this is the visual of all the terms that we'll use in this section and moving forward. Okay, so now let's answer some questions involving transformations. Example one, uh, we're given a matrix A, a vector U, a vector B, and a vector C. And we're defining our transformation from R2 into R3 by T of X equals AX. That is what the transformation is. All right, and so what part A wants us to do is find the image of vector U. What is T of U? So part A, we're gonna say, all right, I need T of U. That is, how do I do that? I take and I multiply A times U. So I'm gonna write down my matrix A, one, negative three, three, five, and minus one, seven, times the vector U, two, whoops, negative one, and what do we get when we find that product? Let's see. I got 5, 1, negative 9. 5, 1, negative 9. Remember, we multiply the row by the column and find that linear combination. 2 times 1 plus negative 3 times negative 1 is 5, right, et cetera, et cetera, to the other two linear combinations. So that vector, 5, negative 1, 9, is the image of the given vector u. Now, moving on to part B, it says find an X in R2 whose image under T is B, All right? Pause, take a second to think how we could do that, right? But what we really need to do is we need to find a vector X such that T of X is equal to B. 
So I need to know what vector, if I take my matrix A, 1, 3, negative 1, negative 3, 5, 7, and multiply it by some vector x1, x2, and I produce the vector B, which they give us is 3, 2, and negative 5 as the last entry. Right? How do I do that? Well, augmented matrix, row operations. Boom. That's what it boils down to throughout a lot of this chapter, is I'm going to augment matrix A, 3, 5, 2, negative 1, 7, negative 5. Here I can draw my dotted line. I'm not going to go through these row operations. I will leave that to you or to your calculator. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1 0.5, and negative 0.5, 0. See, we have a row of zeros here. We should get that because we're only solving for two unknowns. We only have an x1 and an x2. So the vector x that maps on to b is 1 and a half, negative a half. That's the vector x that maps onto the given vector b. Now let's answer part c. Let me scroll up so you can see it again. Is there more than one x whose image under t is b? The answer to that is no, exactly one. Even though we have a row of zeros, each, oops, I meant to circle that, each free variable has a solution. x1 has a value, x2 has a value. There's no other, uh, there are no free variables. So row of zero doesn't automatically mean a free variable, okay? Because we have our two solutions there. So the answer to that is no exactly one. No exactly one vector, not more than one, okay? And then part D, again scroll up, determine if the vector C is in the range of the transformation t. Okay, to do that, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to augment our matrix, our matrix A, 1, 3, negative 1, negative 3, 5, and 7, with the given c vector, which was 3, 2, 5. Go through some row operations, which again, I will leave to you. You get 1, 0, 0, negative 3, 1, 0, and 3, 2, negative 35. Okay, and what does that mean? Because we have that bottom row with an inconsistent statement, right? This system has no solution. So C is not in the range. All right, there we go. That's the end of that example. In this next example, we don't have to do very much work or any work at all. Uh, the, it, this is just one you read through and see if you understand the concept of what it's saying. Here, this matrix with a lot of zeros, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. If I use that as my the, the matrix of my transformation and I map x onto a times x, that projects points in R3 into two-dimensional space, into the x1, x2, x-plane. But it doesn't change the values of x1 and x2 because of the ones there and zeros everywhere, everywhere else. So it takes a vector. Let me draw my plane here, or my R3. It takes a vector that's maybe, say, up here and drops it down into the x1, x2 plane, or a vector that's maybe there and drops it down into the x1, x2 plane, but not changing any other values in the vector itself, just squishing it down flat, kind of. Our next example is a really wordy one again, but read through it, see if you understand uh, the why what it's saying makes sense, okay? And there's pictures in the book of what this transformation looks like, so I encourage you to go to the book. It's on page 66, um, and take a look at this, the visual of this kind of transformation, okay? But it's called a shear transformation, okay? And if I, and, oh, the matrix of a shear transformation looks like this, one, one along the diagonal, a zero down there, and a K up there. Because what happens when I multiply that matrix times any vector, 
right? I, I change the top entry, but the bottom entry stays the, sh stays the same, excuse me. And what that does visually is it, it shears the image, uh, if you take it on all points in a two by two square, it shears images to the right, it kind of pushes them to the right because the the y coordinate or the, the x2 coordinate stays the same, but the x1 coordinate changes, right? And this, if my, my initial vector is 1, 1, it keeps the x coordinate the same, or it, it adds k to the x coordinate and keeps the y coordinate the same. So it pushes points to the right in the x direction, or I guess in the negative x1 direction, um, but it keeps the y coordinate the same. So it's, it's one type of transformation. We have dilation transformations also. We'll look at that shortly. But first, let's look at how we define the definition for a transformation to be linear. Okay, so this is the title of the section, linear transformations. So what does it mean for a transformation to be linear? By the way, we're in linear algebra, so our transformations will hopefully be linear. Okay, if I have a linear transformation, then t of u plus v is equal to t of u plus t of v. The transformation of a sum of vectors is the same as if I transform the vectors first and then add. Here, the second one, t of cu, where c is a scalar, equals c times t of u. The transformation of a scaled vector is the same as if I transform the vector and then multiply by the scalar. So these are properties that a linear transformation has. And then you can put those two properties together to, to com make something a little bit different. Uh, these are also properties of linear transformations, um, but they're, you can combine the previous slide with two, uh, the examples on the previous slide to create these two, okay? T of zero equals zero. If I transform the zero vector, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, that's good. And T of CU plus DV equals C times T of U plus d times t of v. That's, again, similar to what uh, was on the, the two properties put together on the previous slide, okay? And to get the, the connection to the visual of these two properties, I encourage you to, there's a YouTube video that's in Blackboard um, from three blue, one brown. It's called The Essence of Linear Algebra, and it's a really, really awesome video. Um, and he really, he doesn't get at like the how to do linear algebra, but he, he exemplifies the beauty of the linear algebra and the connections that, that, that are really, really important to, to help you understand the content. So give that a watch if you have the time. In our next example, we're going to show that a transformation is a linear transformation. Okay, given a scalar r, we're defining a transformation, t of x equals r times x. Um, these are terms maybe you've heard before, right? This is a uh, contraction or a dilation uh, transformation depending on the value of r. But if we let r equal 3, here we are going to, as I said, show, oh, there it is, I was trying to find the word show, show that t is a linear transformation, okay? To do that, we have two choices. We can use, in this example, this set of, of properties or, or how we define a linear transformation, or we can use from the first slide where I formally defined linear transformation. So I'll show you both with two different examples, okay? So if my transformation, t of x, is equal to, uh, let's see, it's 3x in this example, all right? And what I'm gonna say is, well, first, um, what is what do I get when I transform the zero vector? Well, three times zero is zero. Check, done with that first part. It is literally that difficult, or not, depending on how you view that. <laughs> uh, in number two, the second property up above, we're gonna say let u and v be in R2, be in R2, and uh, let C and D be scalars. And this is how you would do it on a homework question or a test question also, be scalars. All right, then T of CU plus DV, so as it is on the left up above, is equal to, now I apply the transformation. What is the transformation? 3X, three times what's in the parentheses, CU plus dv. Now I'm going to use some properties, some some a set of equalities to try to get it look to look like what's on the right up there. 
Okay, so I know that I can distribute that scalar 3 into the parentheses, 3 times Cu plus 3 times uh, dv. And actually what I want to do, I'm going to add on to this, is what I'm doing in each step. So this step is the definition of a transformation. Oops. Definition of a transformation. And this step, as well as the next one, is vector arithmetic. That says arithmetic if I got a little scribbly there. Uh, so 3 times Cu plus 3 times dv. And now my next step is to swap the 3 and the C. I know that uh, 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 scalars, numbers, are commutative. We've known that for hopefully quite some number of years in our lives. So I can change my order here. C times 3u plus D times 3v. And then that looks like what I want it to be above. This is C times T of U plus D times T of V. And we've gone from the left side right there over to the right side right there. Those were supposed to be arrows, but that didn't work out so well. <laughs> so because we verified those two properties, we can say, all right, thus, there's my formal statement, thus T is a linear transformation. Cool. And that's the end of that one. So in that previous example, uh, we showed how the properties of a linear transformation uh, hold to be true in a more general case. And now we'll just do it in a specific example. So for this example, again, you should read through it at your own pace, but we've got a linear transformation. T of x, we, it means multiply this matrix times the vector x, and that's what it produces. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to find the image of this vector, this vector, so u and v, and the image of their sun, sum. excuse me. And if this transformation is linear, then t of u plus t of v should be the same as t of u plus v. All right, so let's do that. And I'm going to label this as part a, part b, and part c. So if par part A, I want T of U, that means I want to multiply A, my matrix A, although I'll, it doesn't call this A, we'll say that's our matrix A. We're going to multiply A times oops, A times U, which is 0, negative 1, 1, 0, times the vector 4, 1. And if you go through that multiplication, you should get negative 1 and 4 as your two entries, right? If you check the multiplication here, it switches them and negates the first, okay? And then for B, we want T of V. So we're going to multiply A times V, which is 0, negative 1, 1, 0, times my vector V, which is 2, 3. And if you do that, you should get negative 3, 2. All right, lastly, part C, we are going to find the transformation of u plus v, which we are given the sum of the two vectors. Check the math there is 6, 4. Uh, but if I multiply matrix A, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, times 6, 4, you should get negative 4 and 6 as your two entries. And if you check negative 1 and 3, negative 3 is negative 4, 4 plus 2 is 6. So that is that just shows that this transformation is linear in a specific case, whereas the previous example was a more general proof of why that transformation, the, the dilation, was linear. Okay, that is the end of section 1.8 and all of the content contained on your first test. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions about this. Uh, you should work on the homework um, and then start studying for your test. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening.